Hi, welcome to Chard Review. When we watch romantic Korean dramas, we all know that we're all in for some slow burn type of love. The movie opens with Kara Robinson, a 15-year-old girl, waking up at her friend Jessie's house. The girls are planning to visit the nearby lake, but before taking off, Kara informs her mother, Deborah Johnson, about their trip. Following the phone call, Jess tells Kara that her mother's asked her to water the plants before they leave and she needs to take a quick shower as well. Hearing this, Kara offers to water the plants for her while she can go freshen up. Dressed in the same clothes she wore to sleep, Kara steps outside and heads towards the plants. And while watering the front yard, she notices a car passing by and leaving the neighborhood. Shortly after, Karen notices the same car re-entering the neighborhood and stopping in front of Jesse's house. Then a seemingly ordinary man steps out of the car carrying some brochures and approaches her. He politely asks if her parents are home, but Kara states that it's actually her friend's house. Then the man inquires if her friend's parents are home, to which Kara says no one without any apparent suspicion. He hence cares some brochures, but right at that moment, the man moves uncomfortably close to her while Kara feels the chilling touch of a loaded revolver against her neck. Right away. The man intimidates Kara, threatening to shoot her if she makes any noise. Clearly filled with fear, the poor girl complies with his demands and once they reach the car, the man orders her to get into a container located in the back seat and then drives away with her. After a while, the abductor pulls over and walks towards the back seat of the car. He then removes the lid from a container and informs Care that he intends to confine her. Emphasizing that he's armed while he goes to retrieve the restraints from the trunk, Kara searches for potential means of escape. She contemplates her chances of survival and imagines trying to make a run for it. However, the fear of being shot prevents her from taking immediate action, so she decides to wait instead. Afterwards, the man returns and calmly proceeds to restrain her hands and legs, even placing a gag in her mouth, before resuming the journey. In the meantime, Jessie gets ready to head to the lake and goes to the front yard in search of Kara, sadly. All she finds is the abandoned garden hose lying on the ground. Overwhelmed with fear, she calls out for her friend but receives no answer. In a state of panic, Jess contacts Deborah to let her know that Kara is missing now. Deborah quickly reaches out to Kara's boyfriend, Ryan to ask if they're together, but has no success. Distraught and worried, the devastated mother contacts the police and then rushes to Jesse's house. Sometime later, the abductor reaches an apartment and carries the container indoors. He then firmly instructs Kara to remain silent while releasing her from the restraints. Afterwards, Kara is led to a bedroom with the abductor outlines a set of rules. The man begins by emphasizing that he's always armed, commands her to comply with his orders and insists that she asked for his approval before taking any action. Following this, the kidnapper proceeds to question Kara about her personal life and jots down her responses in their notebook. He instructs the distressed girl to lie down on the bed and remain silent while subjecting her to his sick behavior. Throughout this horrifying ordeal, Kara can only urge herself to follow the rules of waiting and surviving. Moreover, when her capture compels her to take a bath, Kara actively observes her surroundings mentally, noting various details. Notably, she observes feminine hygiene products and a hairbrush containing blonde hair, suggesting a woman living with them. Elsewhere, Deborah contacts her ex-husband Ron to verify if their daughter's with him. When Ron confirms that Kara is not with them, Deborah tearfully informs them that their daughter might have been kidnapped. Afterwards, a police officer arrives at Jesse's residence and is informed that Kara has been missing for two hours. However, the officer firmly believes that Kara has chosen to run away voluntarily and advises Deborah to be patient and wait in case Kara reaches out. In the meantime, Kara focuses on collecting information while awaiting an opportunity to escape. She engages the man in casual conversation and discovers that he used to be in the Navy. He also assures the girl that as long as she behaves, he won't harm her, and even promises to set her free before leaving. Now, once the man is no longer in her sight, Kara imagines trying to flee yet again nevertheless. 
he realizes that the risk is still too high and opts to continue waiting. Eventually, the capture allows Carrot to observe his pets, expressing his fondness for animals since they have no problem with confinement. With a regretful tone, the man emphasizes that he intends to set her free eventually, but warns Kara about the potential harm to her if she were to report him at her house. Deborah receives information that a neighbor have just spotted an unfamiliar black car in the neighborhood, further confirming her suspicions. In the meantime, Sheriff Dale Stevens shows little. Concern for Care's disappearance and politely brushes off Deborah, suggesting she should return home. Returning to the house of the abductor, Kara asks to use the restroom, contemplating the possibility of escaping. But just as she's about to shut the door, the man unexpectedly emerges with his gun, observing her in a disturbing manner. Later that evening, while her captor prepares a meal, Kara informs them that she doesn't want to eat. Surprisingly, she offers to help with household chores, and oddly enough, he asks her to sweep the kitchen floor. While observing her surroundings, Kara pays close attention to the details, memorizing the names and numbers on the refrigerator, the location of the knives, and the information written on his calendar. Later, the man checks the news to see if anyone knows about Kara's disappearance. When he doesn't find any mention of it, he manipulates Kara into thinking nobody cares about her. Shortly after, he leads the poor girl to the bedroom and instructs her to hide in a container while he makes a call. He then gags her and shuts the lid, causing Kara to struggle to breathe. This anchors the captor. But he eventually removes the gag and leaves the container open. Now Kara quietly weeps as she tells herself that she must survive anyhow. That night, the abductor retrieves a large box hidden under the bird cages, but suspiciously hides it away. The next morning, Kara seizes the opportunity to escape while her capture sleeps. She manages to free herself and quietly leaves the room. Determined to flee, Kara runs out the front door and flags down a car with two men, desperately explaining her abduction. She begs them to take her to a police station. They agreed to help the poor. Girl and Kara asks them to remember a particular apartment unit. Finally, Save Kara arrives at the police station and approaches the front desk to report her abduction. Then Lt. Aaron Rowland questions her in detail while waiting for the missing person's report. As Sergeant Bonnie Jennings questions the rescuers, they confess to not remembering the apartment clearly. She then mentions Deborah's missing persons report filed the day before and seconds later the worried mothers informed that her daughter has been found. Later, Bonnie asks Kara if she can recognize the capture's apartment. Initially hesitant, Kara Sun gathers the courage to revisit her captor's apartment once again. Afterwards, Kara comes to the apartment complex accompanied by the police. However, she realizes that all the units appear identical. At that moment, the officers spot a maintenance man and give him a description of Kara's captor. Kara joins them and adds more information, specifically mentioning the abductor's pets. Luckily, the maintenance man manages to figure out that it's apartment 301 Aaron then accompanies Kara back to the police station where she tearfully reunites with her mother. In the meantime, at app 301, the officers utilize the key provided by the maintenance man to unlock the door, only to discover an empty apartment. Following this, Bonnie presents a collection of photographs depicting potential suspects, and Kara promptly identifies a man. The identity of the abductor is unveiled as Richard Evenitz, but he's already managed to flee from the lease department. Kara further assists the officer by sharing all the information she gathered, particularly emphasizing the presence of a large box located beneath the bird cages within the box. The police officers discovered potential evidence of Richard's past crimes, newspaper clippings, and a notebook. It soon uncovered that the clippings are related to unsolved cases involving Sophia Silva and the Lisk sisters, who were also victims of abduction. Evidently, Richard has a pattern of holding his victims captive for several days before ultimately drowning them and disposing of their bodies in the swamp. Meanwhile, the notebook contained information about potential targets and their daily routines. Yet Kara's name was absent. Therefore, Jim speculates that on the day of Kara's 
The intended target must have changed their routine, leading Richard to abduct someone else instead. Following that, Bonnie updates Jim on the progress, revealing that Richard's wife, mother, and sister have all agreed to collaborate with the investigation. Additionally, the mother grants them permission to search your residence, which leads to the discovery of Richard's old car. The next day, Kara informs her mother about her plans to go see Ryan, a decision that her mother strongly opposes. Deborah argues that she should stay put until Richard is arrested. Nevertheless, Kara asserts that she won't change her life due to this unfortunate event. Meanwhile, Aaron interrogates Richard's wife Ashley, who claims that she was away during the weekend and denies any interaction with Richard. Later, Richard's sister Stephanie also arrives, and during her questioning it's revealed that Richard had contacted her the previous afternoon. Upon learning this, Aaron hurriedly shares the information with Jim about the motel where Richard is believed to be staying. Unfortunately, when they arrive at the motel, they discover that Richard has already escaped. However, they do. Kara's shirt left behind, suggesting that he may have fled in a hurry. Additionally, the evidence uncovered at the apartment matches that of the Sylvia and Lisk sisters' cases. In the meantime, Sheriff Dale arrives at the Johnson residence and refers to Kara as a victim, disclosing Richard's intention to harm her. He emphasizes that Kara was lucky not to become his next target, but the young girl fearlessly asserts that her escape had nothing to do with luck. Following this, Sheriff Jim visits Kara as well, addressing her as a survivor rather than a victim. He admires her strength and ability to defend herself. This change in perspective empowers Kara to view her situation in a new light. Later on, Deborah requests Kara not to leave the house, but the young girl remains determined to restore normalcy to her life. She then departs with just to attend a baseball game where she extends good luck wishes to Ryan before the match begins. Elsewhere, Aaron makes a significant discovery that Richard recently used his cell phone in Jacksonville, Florida just 15 minutes ago. Additionally, Bonnie provides an update that they managed to contact Pamela. Richard's other sister in Bradenton, Pamela, confirms that Richard had indeed called her and arranged to meet outside a restaurant. Consequently, this information is relayed to the Bradenton Police Department, alerting them that Richard might be en route. Shortly after, the Bradenton officers spot Richard, causing him to flee. While one officer pursues him on foot, the other officer remains behind, relaying their location through the radio before joining the pursuit in a car. Eventually, the officers manage to corner Richard, leaving him with no means of escape in a state of desperation. Richard takes his own life using his own gun, coinciding with the sound of Ryan hitting a home run. The audience roars and cheers for Ryan's achievement while unknowingly celebrating the nightmare finally coming to an end. In a sudden realization, Kara understands that there won't be a trial anymore, sparing her loved ones from the distressing specifics of her abduction. Afterwards, she apologizes to her mother and expresses her desire to regain her freedom, refusing to let the trauma restrict her. Deborah also expresses remorse for being overly controlling and confesses her uncertainty and handling the situation. Ultimately, Kara comforts her mother, assuring her that although they can't erase the tragedy, it doesn't define who she is as she is a survivor through and through. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below, and if you like the video, please like and subscribe for more movie review. Thank you for watching.